Testing, one, two, three, thank you. Good morning and welcome to River Road Presbyterian Church. I'm Pastor Kelly Ann Rail, the interim associate pastor here at the church. Today is a special day. Um, I'm in the pulpit uh, with liturgy, and we have our very own Nelson, Reverend Nelson Taylor, will be bringing you the word and uh, the sermon today. We thank. Uh, Nelson very much for stepping into the role. So 
prayers for Ray. He is still dealing with COVID. So please keep him in your thoughts and prayers. I'd like to welcome all of you to this Sunday service, and i also like to stand, extend a warm welcome to those of you at home. It is so good to have each and every one of you here in worship today. Now, let us join our voices together in the opening sentences of Scripture. I am yours, save me, for I have sought your precepts. I have seen a limit to all perfection, but your commandment is exceedingly broad. Your commandment makes me wiser than my enemies, for it is always with me. I understand more than the age, for I keep your precepts. I hold back my feet from every evil way in order to keep your word. I do not turn away from your ordinances, for you have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Let us pray. Most loving and gracious God, we praise you and we thank you for the guidance that you give us in your word and by your spirit. We thank you for choosing to dwell among us and praise you for calling us to be your faithful people. Bless this time of worship and prayer that those who need comfort may be comforted, those who need challenge may be challenged. And that, though, and that all of us may grow closer together as your children, as members of the body of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. We are going to turn to him, the hymn that's printed in your bulletin, <laughs> Immortal, <laughs> Invisible, and we, we ask you to sing as directed. Thank you.
Amen. You may be seated. Mm. Mm. Felt that one in your bones. That is just awesome. We come before God not as despised sinners, but as beloved children with the confidence of the children of God. Let us humbly confess our sins first in silence and then be by reciting the unison prayer of confession printed in your worship guide. Let us pray. Holy One, we now offer our confession as a community. Dear God, we confess that we too often forget that we are yours. We carry on our lives as if there was no God, and we belong to no one but ourselves. We ask your forgiveness and strength. Give us clear minds and open hearts, and remind us who you are us to be. Amen. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Christ, Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. Let us now extend the peace of Christ to one another. The peace of Christ be with you. Peace to those of you at home. Thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy praise. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount, I'm fixed upon it. 
Mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, thither by thy help I'm come. And I hope by thy good pleasure, safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood. <laughs> oh, to grace. How great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy grace, Lord, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts Holy One, we just give you great thanks for this day. We give you great thanks that we have come together in community to be your church. And as we hear the scriptures and the music and the messages, open our hearts and minds to receive it. So then when we scatter from this place, we go out into the community at large and glorify you through showing kindness and love. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May I have my young friends come visit with me, please? Got a few. I hear a sweet little baby. Do y'all hear that little baby's cry? It's such a sweet little cry. Yeah. Hi, how y'all doing? Good, okay, well, I don't often bring storybooks, but I brought a storybook today because the scripture that um, Nelson is gonna be preaching from reminded me of this story and the scripture verse, the exact scripture verse that help me choose this book it's, it says this it's from the book of Ephesians okay it says Christ is our peace he made us both Jews and Gentiles into one group with his body he broke down the barriers the walls walls can be barriers the walls of hatred that divide us so now you are no longer strangers and aliens Rather, you are fellow citizens with God's people, and you belong to the household of God. So let's see how this book might help us, okay? All right. You see the title? You want to read it for me? God's Dream. Yes, God's Dream by Desmond Tutu and Douglas Carlton Abrams. Let's see. 
what these authors have to say about God's dream. Dear child of God, what do you dream about in your loveliest of dreams? Do you dream about flying high or rainbows reaching across the sky? I love to fly in my dreams. Do you dream about being free to do what your heart desires? Or about being treated like a full person no matter how young you might be? Do you know that God do you know what God dreams about? Hmm. If you close your eyes and look with your heart, I'm sure, dear child, that you will find out. God dreams about people sharing. sharing. God dreams about people caring. caring. God dreams that we reach out and hold one another's hands and play one another's games and laugh with one another's hearts. But God does not force us to be friends or to love one another. See what's happening there? Mm -hmm. Dear child of God, it does happen that we get angry and hurt one another. Soon we start to feel sad and very alone. You see that boy? He's lonely sad. He's all by himself. Even, even the puppy won't go near him. Look, she's got an angry face. Sometimes we cry, and God cries with us. But when we say we're sorry and forgive one another, we wipe away our tears, and God's tears too. You see, they made friends again. Each of us carries a piece of God's, God's heart within us. And when we love one another, the pieces of God's heart are made whole. Do you see what's happening? See how they're joining the... What, what shape is this? It is a heart. Who loves hearts? Everyone loves hearts. But who really loves hearts in her office? No, my office. Yes, I have lots of them. Hearts. God dreams that every one of us will see that we are all brothers and sisters. Yes, even you and me. Even if we have different mommies and daddies. Or live in different faraway lands. Even if we speak different languages. Or have different ways of talking to God. Even if we have different eyes or different skin. Even if you are taller and I am smaller, even if your nose is little and mine is large, dear child of God, do you know how to make God's dream come true? It's really quite easy. As easy as sharing, loving, and caring. Easy as sharing, loving, and caring. Easy as holding, playing, and laughing. Easy as knowing we are a family because we are all God's children. Will you help God's dream come true? Let me tell you a secret. God smiles like a rainbow when you do. Amen? Amen. Ah. You saw paw prints, and guess what's happening? Yes, guess what's happening today at 3 o'clock? The, the blessing of the animals. So, the cat and the dog. Yeah, the little cat and the dog from the book. Well, Finn or Ada are coming to the blessing of the animals, and Dara, Grandma, and they're going to pass their blessing on to Finn and Ada. Uh, well, the puppies are coming too. Yes, yeah, see, so as part of God's creation are the animals too. So... I was telling you all about God's dream because God's dream is for us to love one another and be at peace. And that means all of us all over the world. And sometimes peace is hard. But what we can do is be ambassadors of God's dream and try to be peaceful in our homes and in our church and in our community. Okay? And in our dog houses, for sure. Now, you're going to go back to your pews today because Pastor Kellyanne has to be up here. 
assisting Nelson. And I'm going to give you a piece of paper. Whoop, come back. I'm going to give you, how about two pieces of paper? Because you might have two ideas. So I want you to draw what God's dream looks like to you. I want you to draw it out today. And here's a bag of crayons. Crayons? You do? Well, you can take extra ones. How's that sound? And for you as well, dear Beckett. All right. All right, head back to your pews. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. first got the word from Ray, um, um, Kelly and I had been playing a little bit of virtual game of rock, paper, scissors, <laughs> as who gets the wonder of bringing the message today, uh, by the fact that I had a 15-minute wedding to prepare for yesterday to officiate, and she had a full weekend of, re um, of retreat with 50 women. I said, no, you win. So I'm here today, and I hope you allow this old Baptist music minister to offer some words for thoughts today. Um, I want to begin by reading our text. And I bring this Bible not to impress you, but because it's large print. <laughs> Hear these words from Ephesians 2, verses 4 through 22. But God, who is rich in mercy... Out of that great love which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace for kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works so that no one may boast, for we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. So then, remember that at one time you were Gentiles by birth, called the uncircumcision, by those who are called the circumcision a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, in his flesh, he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall. That is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with the, its commandments and ordinations that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace. And might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. 
So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into the dwelling place for God. May God bless the reading of his holy word. Let's pray. Divine Creator, God, we are so thankful for this time to come together, and as we hear these words, may we pray that the peace of Christ and the hostility that is experienced in this world today between different sections of faith, different groupings of people who love you in their own way, may we be brought together in unity. And may the hostilities be ceased. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our minds, our very earthly being is limited. We are un unable to fully grasp the fullness of God. The mystery of God and God's movement within humanity, and indeed within all of creation, is not only beyond our comprehension, but beyond our words. We must use metaphor, symbol, and imagery to try to capture a glimpse of the divine. Jesus himself told stories and offered imagery to help us. He described God's new realm, God's new kingdom, like this. The kingdom of God is like a woman looking for a lost coin. The kingdom of God is like a man who found a rare pearl in a field. And on and on. He also used a metaphor for himself, an imagery for himself. I am the good shepherd. I am the gate. I am the gatekeeper. I am bread. I am light, etc., etc., etc. It is through these images that we are given a sliver or a glimpse of an understanding of God. Well, today I want to consider another mystery that may not seem so much so as we talk about it all the time. And I'm speaking of the church or of the community of Christ. The words church and community uh, seem plain enough. But I feel that the, the concept of the church holds just as much mystery. So who we are and why we do what we do and say the things that we say. Just as Jesus used simple language and story in explaining the kingdom, I'd like to offer um, a simple little song and a familiar image as metaphors as we, we begin our journey of understanding. When I grew up, um, a song that was sung every, in, in the Baptist church, I grew up in Charlottesville, uh, there was a simple little song that we sang at every communion. Blessed be the tie that binds, I'm singing nods, their hearts in Christian love, the fellowship of kindred minds, is like to that above. Seemingly simple uh, lyrics. But when we think about a tie that binds, what descriptors or images come to mind? A rope that binds? A man's tie, which for some is very binding. Binding on a rug to keep it from fraying. A book binding that draws together its pages. A contract that binds an agreement. All these images are useful, however, not full enough for our purposes today. I'd like for us to consider the image of a human chain often found in protest or demonstration. Many of us in this room will remember the civil rights demonstrations of the 60s. 
image that has always been seared in my head is that image of Martin Luther King and the leaders um, arm in arm walking towards Selma before the uh, violence that occurred. Many of us also remember the Vietnam demonstrations that happened in campuses all over the U.S. And students locked arms to protect a section or to show uh, their, their common identity and common demonstration. In the 90s, um, another image seared on my, on my mind is the Chinese students uh, in Chechen Square linked arm in arm as the water cannons were thrown upon them and tanks came up upon them. Of course, more recently, we've got the Black Lives Matter protests where we saw, often saw images of uh, people white and black, arm in arm, to show solidarity in what they were trying to express. With all of these images and what we often witness is, if not even take a part in, is where the demonstrators are, why the demonstrators are linked in arm, binding themselves together serving as that human barrier or human force. What is the effect of this linking of arms? What other purposes does this linking do and the binding to each other serve? Well, I'm going to offer a couple suggestions and then we think about those as we go into the rest of the message. One, they are linked in a common calling or cause, a common unity. They are linked in determination, finding strength in numbers. They are linked in support of each other. When something befalls one member of the, of the chain, the others provide support to him or her by their combined strength. As we try to understand this image and how we are to be as community, we need to first understand that the very nature of God is communal. By the nature of the Trinity, God manifests in three forms, in three persons. It is theologically called the divine dance. The self-expression of love and of worship that emanates from this loving Trinity. Before we walked into these doors, communion and worship were already happening. The grand, great trinity was already involved in this dance with each other. And we are just being invited into it. Now, in light of that nature of God, let's look at our own image of the human chain and see how we are linked or bound to each other within this communal nature and what it presents for us. I'm not going to do a three-point sermon. I'm going to do a four-point sermon, but... We'll be out of here by 12.30 or so. <laughs> Kidding. First of all, we are linked by a common recognition. And that common recognition is that we, and a common knowing is that this, is that we are recipients of a common grace and redemption. By being the redeemed of Christ, we have been linked by that common thread of knowing. And thus knowing we should share in both the humbleness and the great gratitude of that knowing. In gratitude, we come together in thankful worship as the redeemed community. And in humbleness, we recognize that shared grace to all and then live it accordingly. Loving, serving, and welcoming all into the community. Knowing of our shared sin and our shared redemption. C.S. Lewis states, to be a Christian means to forgive the inexcusable because God has forgiven the inexcusable in you and me. And this applies to the greater community as well. Dietrich Bonhoeffer in his book, Life Together, quotes, Even when sin and misunderstanding burden the communal life, is not the sinning brother still a brother? with whom I, too, stand under the word of Christ. 
Will not this, his sin be a constant occasion for me to give thanks that both of us may live in the forgiving love of God in Jesus Christ? Each of us stand here linked together, bound in the knowledge of our redemption, hopefully thankful and humbled by that knowing. Point two. Our second comparison is that we are linked in a call to a love that is beyond the nature of human love. Most of us are well aware of the 1 Corinthians 13 text and its description of true Christ-like love. We typically have heard that text, uh, or frequently have heard that text at weddings. However, when within this 13-verse challenge, if we really go into its true depths, which we won't do today, we should see a deeply sacrificial nature that is not for our own sake, but for the sake of others and the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's hear just a very small segment of that Corinthians text. If I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is kind. Love is patient. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. Ouch. It does not insist on its own way. Ouch again. As we have heard in our first community comparison, the same sentiment applies. Pride, having our own way, boastfulness. These are not the way of Christ or of his community. Doing charity to boast and to brag does not point to the redemptive God that we would claim to serve. Love is not for the sake of self, but for the sake of Christ and the other. Third comparison. The fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. We have become brothers and sisters in Christ. Although it seems similar to our first comparison, this third awareness is totally about the action of God. As our, as our Ephesians text told us, in uniting us. In the, from, from the very beginning, in the Leviticus text, the first unifying claim is within God's call to Israel. You will be my people, and I will be your God. This continual unifying action of God is throughout the scriptures. It's not a building or a denomination, sorry, but a drawing together of those who have opened themselves to God's complete redemptive action. One of the mistakes that we make in our theological understanding at times is that our journey of faith is an individual redemption and response. The fuller biblical message and understanding is that God's unifying action is for and through the redemption and call of the entire community. Let me read that again. The fuller biblical message and understanding is that God's unifying action is for and through the redemption and call of the entire community. I'll read a small section again of the Ephesians text to let that reverberate in what we've been talking about. Abolishing the law with, with its commandments and ordinance that he might create in himself one humanity in place of the two, thus making peace and might reconcile both to God in one body through the cross, cross thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and, I, and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints. Fellow citizens with the saints. And also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as a cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a whole temple, holy temple, in whom you are also built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. 
We are members of the household. We have kindred minds. We are within a unified body. We are fellow citizens with the saints. Is like to that above. And finally, we are linked in service. This redemptive call, as mentioned before, begins with the first recorded call of Abraham and the people of Israel through Exodus. In that you will be my people, that they may serve me and bless all nations, or peoples, depending on which translation you read. And this call continues into the New Testament, and the call Jesus proclaims of himself and within the first gospel written, Mark 10, 45, he states, The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. And resonating with that call as followers of Christ, we are to be servants for Jesus' sake in 2 Corinthians. Servants for Jesus' sake. Called to serve God and others. God calls God's unified people to be co-workers, helpers, caregivers, ambassadors, and witnesses. These and so, so many other opportunities to serve suggest that the, this particular community has its reason for not, excuse me, reason for being not in itself, but in the task, which is to serve God and all nations. We should always remember and realize that God is extravagant and outreaching love. That is God's nature. If the church, the community, is not being fully forgiving, totally welcoming, extravagantly outreaching in love and service, then it slowly becomes unhealthy, inward-focused, and self-serving. And as one contemporary theologian by the name of Bono stated... That's when the spirit leaves the room. Think about that. The community service of God finds its expression in worship, prayer, and praise. The community service toward the world takes a myriad of forms toward witness of God's extravagant love through word and deed. This twofold action of the community are integrally related within Jesus' twofold commandment to love God. And love neighbor. And we are eternally linked in that. For me, the message or the, the I have a theological understanding of worship and the business of the church. And for me, it's breath. It's the taking in and the sending out. We come to this place, we are drawn in the inward breath to worship God, to give gratitude, to be restored, to lift each other up to have fellowship, to then to be breathed out, to go into world, to the world and to send this message out there that there is this loving, extravagant, giving, redemptive God. For me, that's the twofold action of the church. And we are the community that are called for that. We could continue on with these images and comparisons of how we are linked arm in arm in a, as a unified community and as a single humanity. But starting today with our knowledge of shared redemption, our call to Christ-like love, our realized kinship, our common call of service, we are truly bound together. Like the Holy Trinity, the divine image that we are created in, we are communal in our nature. And that is certainly and thankfully a most divine dance. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Loving and gracious and giving God, we are thankful for this message. We ask that throughout the service, whether it be through the music, the scripture, the words offered, the fellowship given, that we have been lifted in a little bit of joy or encouragement or hope as we go out into this world. For it's in Jesus' divine name that we pray. Amen. I invite you now to stand and sing.
hymn number. I should know this. 703. Thank you. Beloved, please let us join our voices in, firm, in affirming what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his Son, our only Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. O Holy One, as we look over the news from around the world, we cannot help but to grieve the ongoing violence, the war, and mistreatment of others. As news reports of violence and atrocities in the Israel-Palestine increase, we are keenly aware that war is still destroying life and property in Ukraine. And we know violence still ra ravages our world in subtle ways that do not make the news. Guide us, Holy One, as we repent of our warring ways. Help us instead to meditate on your teachings 
of mercy, grace, and forgiveness. In addition to the destruction of human life and property, God of all, we are increasingly aware of our fragile planet we call home. Help us to live in a balanced relationship with the world around us, caring for the plants and the animals whose lives are woven together with ours in a beautiful tapestry of diversity and relationship. Loving God, sustain us as we seek to follow your desire and walk in your ways to observe your commandments. Love God, love self, love others, all with humility. Help us to have eyes and ears to see and hear the plight of our neighbors near and far. And may we reach out with your love and presence linked to all those who grieve, who mourn, who are in pain, who are sick, who are hungry, thirsty, who are depressed, who ache, who have nothing. We trust that you are present in their lives as you are in ours. Watch over them, watch over us, we pray, as you watch over all creation. And as your servants, may we labor for your purposes, building, gardening, watering, reconciling, growing, peace. May we work together for your dream, peace on earth. Now, Holy Father, God, Spirit, in Christ Jesus, we pray together the words he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Now let us humbly reflect on our offerings of time and talent as we present our monetary offerings.
good and gracious God, we give you great thanks that we get to offer ourselves, our time and our talent and our treasure to you, Lord. May these gifts go out into the world as breath, as Nelson said. As we have received, may we breathe out into the world with these gifts to spread light and love to the brokenness, one small act at a time. It is in our Savior's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I have a few announcements. I would invite everyone to come back for today's very special blessing of the animals. It is going to be held at 3 o'clock on the lawn, and uh, Reverend Bob Shank will be presiding over that wonderful <coughs> ceremony. Also, the men of the church are meeting this Thursday at Kindred Spirits, and I'm told food will be provided. And then do sign up for Wednesday night supper by noon tomorrow, and um, all the sign-ups, uh, you can get to them by clicking the little square in the back of your worship guide. Now, let us turn to hymn number 366. Mm -hmm. 